pleased with your performance tonight? Yeah, um, um, I, a lot of uh, good things, especially the way I was able to fight in the important games and sort of get through that and sort of, I, I was able to find my right level at the end of each set and I was wavering a little bit in and out, I was obviously struggling with a little bit of confusion on what I needed to do, but most importantly is I was able to do it on the important moments. What troubled you um, as you entered the, the tiebreaker in the first set? Well, I was I was struggling. He was playing well. He was moving around well. Um, I was getting a lot of free points on my serve, uh, fortunately. But um, he was sort of, uh, even though I felt like I would dictate the center of the court, he was sort of, he would get to me eventually. He'd sort of play a few b balls too deep, or he'd defend well, and these kind of things. And um, he just made it difficult on me. Um, most important thing I think that time um, was the kind of competitor I was at that stage in my career and I think that's what really got me through today just the right attitude and competing the right way obviously I think I've improved a lot since then and that obviously helps but in those key moments my attitude got me through Steve Johnson has yeah, he is, and uh, he couldn't have had any better preparation to face me. Uh, yeah. I think he's gonna, he's facing the top three ace leaders and leaders in the serving categories, so it's gonna be very difficult. Uh, most important thing is gonna be uh, controlling the center of the court. I feel like uh, maybe. Compared to the previous two guys that he got through, I feel like I move better. Maybe I dictate from the center of the court better. So hopefully that can get me through. Can you speak to the third set or, sorry, the tie break experience in general. Four, four sets for you, four tie breaks. Steve Johnson has also had a lot of success so far in this tournament in the tie breaks. I guess what, what, what's the mindset? Obviously, you'd like to finish the job a little earlier if possible, but have the, the tie break. Well, I know that. Um, I'm struggling, uh, take care of your serve, get to the tie break. And because I can always pick up three points, it just gives a, an extra stress on my opponents when it does come into a tie break. It's still up for a coin toss, but I feel like it sort of gives me a little bit of an edge, the fact that I can finish with that one shot a lot of points. And that can just cause a certain amount of pressure on my opponents, either cause them to tighten up or just cause them, uh, cause them to not play the way they would like. Sort of a, a little bit of a security blanket there in an otherwise potentially high pressure situation. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's nice knowing in an important moment, if I hit my serve well, that's normally going to give me an ace or a free point. How does the court that you're on, I guess, matter to a player, whether you're on like the stadium court or one of like, the outer courts? It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's like smaller courts are better for me. Uh, just because there's less space and it sort of feel, it makes it feel like uh, the serves are going quicker through. And it can make a lot of things feel like they're just happening quicker psychologically. So that's a better thing for me. But uh, I've been fortunate enough to get to play on a lot of big courts recently and I've just grown, grown to like that situation and grown, grown to actually enjoy playing in them and not really notice the difference between an outside court or a center court. Do you feel like it's a sort of like sign of respect when you're put on like a stadium court? Obviously, I think it. I think uh, it's something that's deserved. Um, you see it amongst the top guys; they don't, they don't waver from playing on center court pretty much all the time. Do you have a favorite court? The courts you play on around the world? Favorite court that you like to play on? I would have wished I had a better experience on it, but Arthur Ashe is uh, is pretty damn special. You and Ivan have been together for some time now. What do you think um, he's contributed in terms of your game or mentality? And was there a point where you guys have reevaluated your relationship together as a coach and people? And what reevaluated in what situation? In what Just um, his, his role and how you two have meshed together. Yeah, we have. Um, I think after Wimbledon, that's when we sort of sat down. Not only how he works with me, how Ricardo sort of fits in, and how it works with Dalibor and the physio after Wimbledon we sort of sat down because that was a one year mark for me, Ivan and Dalibor and then the other two sort of came along later. 
Things are going well. Um, I think the knowledge and understanding that he's given me of what I need to do to win, that's what sort of got me through the last four tie breaks. That's when I was sort of really finding in those important moments and what I need to do. And uh, I think that's where it sort of shined through mostly. Um, obviously, I feel like I'm a much better player than I was a year ago. But it's sort of the understanding of what I need to do in those big moments. And I'm learning better and better and getting better at that. How does Ivan get those lessons over to you? Is it exams on court? Is it sort of discussions? Is it philosophy? Or discussions, pointing it out when it happens in practice, pointing it out when we're watching other matches together. When we re review my own matches, conversation over dinner, uh, there's a lot of different uh, sort of situations. But I think probably the one is when we've reviewed matches or what I've done against certain guys or what certain guys have done against me in big moments. Uh, just uh, following up on that question, I'm curious about whether you said part of it is when you're watching other matches together. <coughs> um, I'm curious if you guys watched the Wimbledon final together or even separately and what you thought of the fact that Novak was, you know, he had several opportunities in the fourth set, didn't take them, and had to, you know, it was a pretty big mental test to come back and close that fifth set out. I mean, is that an example of the kind of thing you might talk about? Or? <coughs> it is, but um, as soon as I finished out when we sort of went our separate ways and went on a little bit of a break. So we never really talked about it. Um, Ricardo messaged me a little bit about it because it's really hard to shut Ricardo off from tennis. Yeah, you said uh, at the but, time that you were going to take a break. I'm just curious, did you watch them on Yes, I did. I did watch, no, 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 not, I watched on TV live. Yeah, yeah, that's From what I meant. Yeah. Toronto. Uh, I did not, uh, I watched the last three sets, because I just landed yeah. when the match was still going on. So I did watch, a, uh, I think, three, four sets of it. Last questions? What's it like to practice with Serena Williams? It's interesting, it's fun. Uh, completely different experience. It was myself, Daniel, and her, and it was fun, I have to say. She hit hard? Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thank you. You expect, you expect um, yeah, actually. I, um, I have to say, I, was, I, I thought there would be a bit more of a difference from the center of a court, from a guy's racket, and from a wind's racket. Thank you very much. Thank you.